Felicia. Okay, Ms. Felicia. <clears throat> well, I know uh, most of you, I think. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I grew up here. I'm Felicia A. Bear. I went to Eunice High School. I won't tell you what year I graduated. Um, my family's from here, and um, my dad had a store in Vazil. My mother was a public health nurse here, uh, Lily A. Bear, for all of her life. So um, I'm really glad to be back. My um, travels, my life has taken me many, many different places, including Africa. Uh, so needless to say, I'm glad to be back. And the SEAL guest house has always intrigued me. I never did get to stay there, but when I was here for a family reunion in 09, uh, November of 09, um, I was determined to find it and take a look at it, and I found it and drove through it by myself and just fell in love with it from the very beginning. It was terribly overgrown with weeds and pine needles and you name it. Um, there was a tenant in the front that's still a tenant there. There was a tenant in the back that's no longer there. The old country store was in shambles. The main house had been closed up for, well, for 10 years. It, it hadn't, as I, as I learned later, it had been closed for the past 10 years. But it had a lot of goodwill. Everybody you talked to about the Seal Guest House had a great memory, had a great story. And so then we started the negotiations, which took us a while, needless to say. If you are familiar with the, with the situation, and I, I, I dearly love both Mark and Jennifer. It was just really kind of tough to be able to deal with people who were out of town most of the time. And I'll just leave it at that. No. But um, anyway, we had, we had a, a, a lot of support from the community. I still have a lot of cousins here who were very excited that we were doing this. And so in March of 2010, we closed on the property. Just prior to that, there was an auction. Uh, that in itself was huge. And we wanted to get that done before we moved in because we didn't have anything to do with the auction. Um, so that happened, which was amazing. And it was a lot of fun. And there's going to be another one down the road, which we will certainly make everybody aware of. But I'm sure there'll be another big sign and, and all this. But anyway, the, what we bought was six acres. And it has a main house with four rooms. Uh, we had uh, we take the back suite. It was a two-bedroom suite that uh, I took for for our living quarters and office. And then Grandpa's cottage in the back, which we are now calling Grand Pairs, um, is available for to rent the whole house, which is a lot of fun. We've had several reunions and uh, slumber parties there, which have been really fun. We've had a lot of. Um, um, fun times there. And then there's the Chappelle Country Store, which we do reunions, receptions, we do weddings, um, and we, we visited some of the Chappelle descendants in Turkey Creek, because the Chappelle store was moved, as many of you may know. It was moved, uh, Mark and Jennifer moved it from Turkey Creek and uh, to the present site, and I understand added the the porches, but it's all reclaimed cypress, beautiful big porches if you've ever been out there. Um, but there is a Chappelle store in Turkey Creek still, but it's the Chappelle Exxon store, <laughs> Exxon station. The Chappelle store was almost robbed by Bonnie and Clyde, so we have a fun story there where um, we have a first-hand written account from one of the descendants and one of the women who was a child at the time living at the store, and they were warned by a moonshiner up the road that Bonnie and Klein were gonna rob the store. And so the way they did it is they would come in uh, during the day and buy a pack of gum or whatever, and give them $20 so they could find out there's no cash registers, of course, then. So they'd find out where the guy would go to the cash box. So um, then that would, that they know where it was. So they did that. They came back um, one night. Uh, they were warned again by the moonshiner. So they, the whole family stayed in the 
in their old car out front with the lights off, very quiet, and of course no lights anywhere at that point. This was around 1930, probably 1932, into 1932, 33. And sure enough, Bonnie and Clyde drive up and get out with their guns and the guys in the other car started turning on the car lights and turning on the horns and all this and scared them away so they didn't get robbed. But, so we said we were almost robbed. Okay. <laughs>